Hey, what's up? Ed Lauber here with LauberDesigns.com, welcoming you to the first of what I hope will be a long line of tutorials. Um, if you're already pretty experienced with Photoshop, these first few may not be all that uh, exciting to watch. Um, think of these as basic training, so someone who's brand new to Photoshop can jump in, follow along, and hopefully move up to bigger and better things. Uh, because Photoshop, uh, opening it up for the first time as a new user can be uh, pretty daunting. So, the biggest thing I can really recommend is just uh, experiment. Um, you know, open up a document, mess around with it, see what tools do, and uh, just just take the time to to uh, go through things. And eventually, you'll you'll begin to recognize when you need to use certain tools. For this first tutorial, I'm going to be taking you through the interface, and then we're going to try to fix up this image that's uh, really blown out here from a vacation I took a few years ago. You see, it's it's all desaturated, uh, no contrast, and we're going to try to uh, fix that. First things first, we're going to come over here to the right here, and you'll see you have some tools here, but for for now, we're going to go through the ones that are open you have your navigator here, this is basically just a smaller view of what you're looking at, you can see how zoomed in you are um, what part of the image you're looking at now below that you have your color palette and you see uh, your RGB here um, that's basically how monitors uh, mix color it's, it's basically working with light so you, you can create every color you see by mixing these three channels but doing so may be kind of confusing if you're unfamiliar with color theory so a, a much easier way to do that is coming over to your foreground and background boxes and quick tip is if you hit X on your keyboard you can cycle between your two colors very easily now if, if I click on this you'll see that you bring up your color picker and you can use this to select a color directly right out of your image or you can try to mix colors um, within the within the dialog box so you see as I drag this value here I change my hue and then you get a much more precise um, way to choose your color within this box here you have your more saturated um, lighter colors up here and your darker down here and over here there's you'll see a whole bunch of numbers again and you, you can probably ignore most of them most of the time but the one really nice one to know about is your hexadecimal number and what that is is an ID for every color that you can choose so you see when I drag this that changes when I drag this it changes and every color has a unique ID so if I double click on this and I hit control C I can now take this color and bring it somewhere else and uh, assuming that that other program has a dialog box with hexadecimal numbers you can input that and copy the color or if you want to save it for later you can uh, copy it down and then uh, bring it back here or you want to transfer to say your your background color you can move it there moving on we have our layers palette and kind of think of layers as a cake and each layer you add to it uh, builds on top of the previous layer and so say this this basic layer down here is your chocolate and and I want to add to this but I don't want to damage the chocolate that I have so I'm gonna add a new layer and anything I add on this this new layer I think of this as say you're adding vanilla to uh, your cake here and I've added this and uh, I can remove this without damaging uh, anything below it and I'm gonna go look for some cake mix I'll be right back next we're gonna come over here to our toolbar and you'll notice that when I click on each of these uh, this this bar up here changes these are basically your options for each tool and what that does is gives you uh, much better control over um, each and every tool and pretty much every one of these has something that you can modify now each of these tools 
are kind of organized into categories. Up here, you kind of have your selection tools. You have your, your lasso, your marquee, and then say you can move your selection, and then uh, magic wand, and then uh, these these um, here below that are kind of for direct editing on your image. So say you take your brush here, and you can squiggle out nice uh, wiggly line here, and I can undo that with Control Z. Or if you need to go multiple steps back, you can hit Control Alt Z. And then uh, say your clone stamp is great for taking one part of the image and copying it to another. So you see, I I directly copied this section over here. Um, and then these tools down here are for kind of vector uh, working with vectors. And then you also have your text tool. Um, we'll be going uh, much deeper into vectors in another tutorial. And then below that are your tools kind of for interacting with the actual window. So you have notes, you can, you're saving it out for someone to work with, you can leave a note for them. And then you have your color, your, your eyedropper tool here. And this will just let you directly sample from your image. And then here is your hand tool. And what this does is, say you're zoomed in, you can easily drag around the image. But probably the best way to go about that, instead of having to select the hand tool, is just hitting space on your keyboard. Holding space will bring up your pan tool, and you can drag around. Last but not least, you have your zoom. And you probably want to use your keyboard shortcut for this. Instead of having to come here, click on this, and then you select whether you're zooming in or out here. So instead, just hitting Control minus or Control plus on your keyboard will make zooming a whole lot easier. So now we're going to try to restore this image here. Um, bring up the contrast and saturation a bit and just try to improve it. So first things first, we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Curves, or Control M on your keyboard. And curves can be a little intimidating to learn, but uh, doing so early on will give you a lot of powerful control over your images. And you'll notice that as these sliders move to the left and down, this gets darker. And that basically points to um, how dark it is on your image. So you see a lot of these trees, this dark building here. This this is really uh, represented here. So you kind of see it's kind of in the mid-range and there's some brighter sections. And this this is the the land on your on this image here. You can kind of visualize how this image lays out on this graph. So this huge spike here near uh, the highlights, you can kind of tell that's, that's your sky and these really bright spots in this building. And how you adjust this is there's a couple common curves that you can add to this line here. This, this line is basically controlling. So it was, you have this straight line here, there's, there's no adjustments to it. And first curve is an S curve. So if I click on this line here, it added a dot. And now I can drag this dot so I'm dragging it down, and you can see uh, most of the adjustments being made are to this, this darker section. And again, that, that shows how this image lays out in this graph. And then uh, the second part of the S-curve is the highlight. So say I wanted to bump up the contrast a little more, I can drag this up, and it just brings this, this uh, line up here. And you'll notice that the sky got brighter, some of the highlights got brighter. And it just brought the contrast up. So we're going to hit OK. And you can see already that, that little difference there. If I hit Control Z, already really improved the contrast in that image. So next up, we're going to go with Levels. Again, that's under Image, Adjustments, Levels, or Control L. It's similar to Curves, but it's set up a bit differently. So you have your Darks over here, your Mid Range, and your Highlights. And again, you can kind of see that arc that, that was the same in the Curves window. We probably could have done the same thing in the curves, but we're, we're going to go through the levels here just to kind of go through a different type of adjustment. So if I drag this, you can see I can easily overdo this, and suddenly it's too dark. So you, you notice when it starts right here, that's, that's probably a good place to leave this first little um, selector. And then these mid-ranges here, I can kind of drag this out, can kind of adjust those a little bit, and just really see that it's it's really brought up the contrast and we're gonna hit OK then. Uh, next up we're gonna try to improve the saturation of the image a little bit. So again image adjustments hue saturation or control U. 
and it's really easy to overdo this tool. So if I drag this too much, suddenly it's way oversaturated and um, just really ugly. So we're going to just do a, a minor adjustment to this, just kind of bump it up a little bit. And over here, you can see your preview. I'm going to undo it, and it's just very subtle, but kind of really helps bring out the color in this, this uh, red building here. And last but not least, we're going to do one more curve adjustment. Um, this is the, the second common kind of curve used. So we're going to bring up our curves dialog box again. And you can see this has changed quite a bit from the first curves. You notice in the first curves box, there's this huge uh, arc here. And that's kind of shifted towards the dark. So you can really see the difference in contrast that we've created. Now, the M curve has, deals with three points. So we're going to put one here, one here, and one here. And this gives us the ability to kind of control both the dark ranges and the high ranges without affecting the mid ranges too much. So we're going to drag this one down just a tad more and we're going to try to bring up those mid ranges a little bit more. And then last but not least we're going to uh, try to add some more, some more contrast to our sky. And so you see as I'm dragging this down Certainly, there's a, a lot more uh, detail that you can see in the sky. So if I undo the preview, it's a lot less blown out, and um, you can see more of the detail in the clouds here. And you'll notice that after doing that, it's kind of formed an M. It's not a very good M. If you wrote this on a paper, no one would know what you did there, but it's it works for curves. And so that that just about does it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. I'm Ed Lover.